Okay. All right. All right. Back on uh, disc brakes, just the, uh, a quick overview. Um, so when you're doing a, a quick inspection on your brakes, you have your rotor here, and you can check this without removing the caliper. A lot of your free inspections are not going to remove the caliper because that's going to you know, require some labor. Um, but keep in mind, you have your rotor and the fin part here is going to be, the, this in here is for cooling, but your rotor, this is this outer and inner part is the, the friction surface. So how you check is you look inside this little hole here and you'll notice that right up against there, this part here is going to be our actual brake pad that, that wears out. So you check how, how thick that is. And typically you can see both sides, on this one we can't, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, typically you can see both pads through this little inspection hole, uh, and then you can measure it and tell the customer, okay, you have, you know, five millimeters left, uh, factory specification is, you know, minimum of uh, three, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, but on this one we can only see the outer, so we swing around here and try and get in a view this way as best we can uh, to get this uh, thickness on this inner pad and it's a little difficult to see on camera here uh, but you can uh, see it in person and get a decent view on it so uh, mr bue is going to take over now as i remove the caliper to show you what's going on okay so we've discussed in the past friction material okay so one of the big upsells in the big talks in the brake industry is semi-metallic, ceramic, all of these different descriptions of pads. The one thing, oh, and what we want to see here, these are called caliper bushings, okay? And before I get into the, the friction material and its composition, around these bushings, they do not stay in metal. They have little rubber O-rings that go around here. And when these O-rings go bad, this allows this portion here to contact the metal here and contact the metal here, okay? So what these kits are to rebuild, you're not actually rebuilding the caliper, you're just replacing these caliper pin bushing kits, okay? So a bushing is an O-ring. But when this O-ring gets flat here, if you look in this channel here, it gets flat and then it allows this caliper to lay up against the pin. And this, our people, our students should understand clearly, this is the leading cause of squeaks on an automot automobile. And why does it go away when you get new calipers? because it's got a new caliper pin bushing kit in it. There's usually nothing wrong with the hydraulics. There's usually nothing wrong with the casting, but people replace the whole caliper. Here's the good part about this. The caliper bushing kit will usually cost you about three to $7, and you can get uh, somewhere between 35 and $40 a side to replace the caliper bushings, and you don't have to replace the whole caliper, yet the money is good for the technician. Okay, so caliper pin bushing kits. Okay, so now I want to get back to the friction material. Yeah. Those of you that have gone to the AutoZone and maybe O'Reilly and even Pep Boys in some cases, they will talk to you and they'll say, oh, okay, would you like to upgrade to the ceramic or would you like to upgrade to the semi-metallic? Race car. Uh-huh, and here's the problem with that. The problem is, is most of the time when people are coming in to purchase brake pads, they're either one of two things. They're either having a grind of which they know that their brakes are bad, or they're having a squeak. More than likely, it's not gonna be a pull. More than likely, it's not gonna be a leak of hydraulic fluid, but it'll either be a normal maintenance brake job, or it's gonna be an annoying squeak. So what happens quite often is that people attribute this squeak again to the composition of the pads, okay? Most pads don't make squeaks. It's how the caliper housing touches the caliper bracket. And it, anytime you have metal to metal, 
you get a vibration, it sets up some harmonics, and the next thing you know, you have this squeak that's not only embarrassing, but it makes you uh, concerned when you're hitting the brake pad. So my recommendation is, is if you really want to get a high quality pad, then just go to the dealer and you can purchase something and, oh, keep something in mind. The dealers will have two different qualities of pad as well. They'll have something like came with it from the factory and then they'll have something less. Always inquire if you're going to the dealer which grade pad they're selling you. But in this day and age, most pads are coming with a lifetime warranty, okay? That's kind of silly because they don't really cover normal wear and tear. They're, they're, they're doing it over defects. So remember, if your car is, like Mr. Hamrick said, a race car, if you will, great, go ahead and, and buy the performance pads but you're not really gonna get that much of a difference and hopefully you're not gonna have to lock up the, the wheels anyway. So squeaks are caliper pin bushings, almost always. Composition of pad is not gonna change it. Turning the rotor is only gonna be a temporary fix because you're gonna still end up with the same deal. Sounds good. Okay, real quick. Just the basics on a uh, hydro boost braking system and a vacuum boost. Here I have my uh, F350 diesel truck and it uses the uh, hydraulic power from the power steering system to give you power assist for the brake. So here's the master cylinder, here's our reservoir to hold all, our, all of our brake fluid, but it gets the power assist again from the power steering. So you'll have uh, uh, power steering lines coming in here that gives you your actual power, uh, the, the assist part anyways. Uh, so again, master cylinder parts the same, the reservoir is the same, but the power assist is hydraulically uh, coming from the power steering system. Uh, you compare that to my 89 F-150 here. And this has more of a traditional setup, which has a vacuum booster. So, master cylinder right here. Here's our uh, reservoir, holds our brake fluid. And this has a vacuum booster. So you'll have a vacuum line, uh, usually a pretty good size one, that goes right to the intake manifold. It's gonna be up over here. And it creates vacuum or takes vacuum and uh, gives your your assist uh, through your booster right here. So when you're checking, you want to check uh, for leaks anywhere around the system. Usually you might be find a little bit underneath here. Um, that'll be your hydraulic fluid, excuse me, your uh, brake fluid uh, starting to seep out a little bit on the bottom. Uh, that's the, the most common area. So just real quick, that's the uh, the basics between your vacuum booster and your uh, hydraulic booster or uh, sometimes it's called a hydro boost uh, a lot of Chevy pickup trucks use them uh, and then also a lot of the uh, diesel trucks because they don't create the manifold vacuum like the gas motors do